Deep breaths. This is gonna be fun. Well, for me, anyways. Back. All right. So you guys immediately exit, uh, having enough of the uh, spice syndicates uh, citadel here. You make your way, uh, leaving the cistern uh, tunnel, making your way back to the surface. Uh, you find yourself just outside the city. A uh, very specific entry is hidden within a lean-to in the shanty town that rests to the eastern wall of Nureen. As you make your way uh, to the surface, you notice several people standing around, watching as you exit, some of them whispering amongst themselves. Directly ahead of you, a peasant man lies on the ground, unmoving. The smell of decay emanates from his body. Ugh, shanty town. As you start walking towards the city, and you make your way into the walls here, you notice it wasn't just the shanty town. There are dead bodies lying amongst the road as you make your way into the city. I'm, uh, can we start making our way a bit faster? Quick, we need to head to, um, City Hall. What the hell happened here? Does it, is, like, everybody dead, or is just, like, a bunch of people just lying around dead? It's not everybody, uh, but there are, there are quite a few as you're making your way into the city. Can I grab the, uh, since we're in the Noble District now, um, someone who looks to be noble and ask them what happened here. And yeah, as you grab this individual and kind of ask what's going on, uh, he tells you that uh, the people saw a man wearing very dark robes uh, come through, had an almost evil presence to him. Uh, as, uh, as he was describing it, you get the sense of something very foul, very evil. Uh, oh, shit. And they described him as death, almost. And uh, they point uh, closer to the south, almost towards the citadel itself, uh, as if that was the direction he was heading. Did he kill all of these people? And the noble nods and says, yes, yes. He, he, whatever he did, it's, it's bad. Well, let's get into, get into the buildings. We have to get to the so I'm just going to go full sprint. So the party uh, immediately turning, heading uh, deeper into the city. Uh, you follow trails of hundreds of bodies that lie dead on the ground, uh, and it leads you directly towards the citadel. Uh, the bodies are in various states of decay, though not turning to undead. Uh, the skin falling from the bone of some, and others, their bones and internal organs crushed from the pressure of their shriveling skin. Fragments of bone uh, shoved through the skin as if it was paper, their eyes and mouths dripping of blood, and in some cases, gushing of regurgitation, refuse, and blood. As you reach closer to the citadel, uh, you look and notice that people are fleeing in every direction. Uh, the building itself, uh, the guards that were once there, dead, collapsed on the ground. And above, you see what appears to be an apparition floating over the building. Very large, almost 30 foot tall, almost a cloud, uh, speaking in a tongue that none of you are familiar. And you turn your attention to it, and it looks down at you, and you hear it speak in common, and it says... Turn back. Your business here is over. Do not make me kill you. Are we supposed to take or ignore his advice? Can I, uh, who are you? The apparition doesn't respond, but... Kaisis is going full force, just going straight ahead. He's ignoring everything. This is not a situation he wants to deal with. He wants inside of this building immediately. Kaisis, uh, we may want to listen. Okay, he's in. Nope, we're going in. Oh. And you're in too. Well, fallen idiots. Holy fuck. 
dear lord. The doors open and our adventurers step into the citadel. This once bustling building is now gravely silent, except for the sobbing of young Malayla, who stands rigid and upright, her head tilted back slightly, her arms at the side, unable to move. Around the room, the smell of death and decay, the bodies of the commoners and their children lie motionless on the ground. At her side, you look at this individual, which stands roughly six foot tall, wearing a large cloak uh, made of leather and cloth. A heavy black wolf, wolf pelt drapes over its shoulders, the hood of the cloak big enough to drape over his face and cover it slightly. His left hand clutches a large blackwood staff, uh, hand resting almost shoulder height, uh, the bottom tip of the staff placed on the ground, and at the top, a large red blood diamond sits on it, uh, which glimmers slightly in the torchlight of the room. As you approach, the man turns his head and looks in your direction, and Kaisis is the first to speak up. And says, unhand her, fiend. And the man turns and looks and grins and says, Fiend? Well, that isn't the way to speak to a god now, is it? Especially someone who has already shown you so much. And as yeah. you hear his voice, all of you get this eerie familiarity to it. Kaisa specifically remembers this voice from the pirate ship. And the one that echoed through the portal. Now, oh, Tiris. Tiris. That is your name, is it not? We only want to talk. And he looks in your direction and says, Perhaps I didn't make myself clear enough. Your business in the ring is finished. Well, I don't believe it. I've got started. I've been planning to open a shop here, but uh, never managed to secure property. So my business, I guess, is finished. However, uh, my deal with you is not, and I'm going to fling a dagger. And as you do, you watch as he chuckles and takes his right hand and bats it out of the sky with no effort. Well, there goes a dagger. He says, perhaps it is time you learn of me as much as I know of you. We have already met, though not formally, I suppose. I am Tyrus the Ascended, god of the realm of the Living Isles. And he immediately stares in Skatarna's direction and says, I was much like you when I was younger, foolish and stubborn. I deserved far more than I was ever given. I should be royalty, and yet my lineage has prevented me from such things. Instead, I was viewed as a nobody. So instead, I dedicated my life to becoming more, to earn my place amongst my people. And as my powers become greater, so has my following. Ha, uh, okay. The dagger was inappropriate. How about this? You have a right to the throne. Am I correct? He looks at you and chuckles a bit and says, Of course I have a fucking right to the throne. Who are you? Who do you believe you are talking to? I believe I am talking to the most powerful person. Not person, sorry. Deity. In the Living Isles. I believe that we have the power to give you the throne. To help you, to not, sorry, not to give, to help you achieve the throne, to help you command the Living Isles, to help you command the Living Isles and maybe Faerun itself. He looks at you and chuckles and says, don't fool yourselves. I command thousands of men with the snap of a finger, and if I want to control the Living Isles, I will do so. Now... I can claim what is mine. You and nobody else here can stop divine intervention. However, you can prevent your own death. 
If you treasure your life, you will turn back now. And what of Malela here? He shrugs and says, when I am finished with her, I will release her. What do you need of her? What does anyone need? Power and information. Can we strike a bargain? Eurus, I've come to bargain. And as Lorigus speaks up, he kind of scoffs and he says, I wasn't, I wasn't actually. Are you sure? No, he was. Yes. He, yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a Doctor Strange reference, but fine. <laughs> uh, Tyrus, we've come to. How about we strike a bargain? And he looks at you and says, <laughs> Your masters have wasted far too much time on someone with no purpose in their life. I can sense it within you. Night after night, ending in a drunken stupor because you have no sense of direction. You're nothing but a sad, lost individual mixed up in a world far greater than yourself. And far greater than you're capable of comprehending. Perhaps that is why you just do as you're told. Yeah. Your master sent you here to die. You're no monk. You're a yes man. Yeah, yes bird. And then he turns. I feel, I feel like the DM's roasting my lack of character development. <laughs> he, turns and, he turns and looks at Kaisis and says, but you... You inspire confidence in those around you. I knew you would be a problem. Perhaps it is time I put an end to this. Much like I will your Imperial counterparts. Uh, no, Tiris, Tiris. We hear you, loud and clear. We will leave the city. We will leave the city. And not come back. You can, you can take Noreen. You can have Ashen Port. You can find your Twilight shards. We don't. We don't care. Just get, uh, let us well, go. Uh, uh, mm. And as you say this, uh, you everybody kind of looks almost in Kaisis's direction, and he's standing very still, uh, looking at the ground, and says, "No." I, I can't stand for this. The tyranny of a mad god cannot be accepted. Guys, don't, guys, don't, don't. Not again. He looks at you. Uh, very firm voice. A uh, bit of determination and a little hubris. And looks back at the party and says, You would allow a god to continue? We would allow ourselves to survive. Uh, Get us through Elven Skull. Frankly, I don't recognize his divinity. Don't say. As, as you're talking to him, he watches. Kaisis kind of reaches to his back and he pulls the shield off of his back and pulls the longbow, and looks over his shoulder at Tiris and says, "You claim to be a god, but..." All I see is a man leading a pack of sewer rats, claiming a city to be his own. Committing suicide here! We're also supposed to be helping this place, not handing it over. What can we do? Kaisis turns and points in Tyrus's direction, saying his command word in Sylvan once again, and you watch as his shield flies around him. He takes his bow and quickly fires off an arrow, immediately releasing it. Tyrus, taking his Blackwood staff, just knocks it out of the sky, but you watch as Kaisis again takes his hands out to the side, and you watch as these three glowing missiles shoot directly at him, hits him dead square in the chest. Tyrus, however, laughs, shrugs it off, and says an incantation pointing in his direction. Kaisis immediately drops to his knees, his skin turning a pale white, blood running from his mouth as he collapses to the ground. 
Okay. His shield yeah. falls to the ground beside him, and his longbow falling out of his hand. Tyrus walks forward, directly in front of him, flourishes his blackwood staff a bit, and then pointing the crystal in Kaisis's direction before dropping to a knee, jabbing him in the chest with the, the end of the staff. You watch as the, the staff quickly hits the chest of Kaisis, knocking him back, unmoving. The necrotic energy taking over his body, causing his flesh to decay directly in front of you. You watch as Tyrus once again flourishes his staff and looks up at you and says, Perhaps I wasn't fucking clear enough. Leave or your life is forfeit. At least let us bury him. I says no. Let's just give him a proper burial. We grab Kaisis's body if it's intact <laughs> enough and front. So you're taking his body and pulling it away? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll bury it somewhere. And take the loot. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, we, we need it to fund our <clears throat> campaign. Uh, yeah. Proper burial. <laughs> You start to make your way towards the door, dragging him behind. The building itself begins to rumble, decorations falling from the walls of the facility and uh, making their way to the floor. As you exit, uh, you notice the citizens of the city are continuing to flee in terror, their screams echoing through the walls of the city, intensifying them a bit. The apparition is still above the citadel. Uh, begins speaking once again in his broken tongue until he notices you outside of the building at which point it turns down and looks at you and says 14 days the living isles will fall as you make your way away from the citadel however you're stopped in your tracks by a woman uh, who steps out of the city hall facility uh, directly to the north She's accompanied by Jeff, my Layla's liaison. Uh, the woman in mostly black robes and silver trim, uh, medium length short hair, uh, standing a little under six foot tall, places her hand on Pandora's shoulder and says, There's no time for discussion. You must leave at once. Uh, very well. Um, yes, this, guys, this way. Gestures. And the party continues, and she leads him to the docks uh, to the north. Uh, the crew is already getting the ship ready, and Jeff watches and follows the rest of the group, a bit nervous, uh, twitchy, as you've come to know Jeff. Uh, as the ship starts to pull away from the docks, uh, Jeff looks over the party and says, that, that man, did he... And he straightens himself up, clears his throat a bit, and he says, Is Miss Valoris alive? Out of Sir Kaisis, what's what happened? Both dead. I would suggest we just put all of that behind us. Uh, Wait, hey, the, we the don't lady. Know. What as far as Layla? we know, the she lady could... lives. Uh, Kaisis <laughs> was a fool. Did did but... you did you not see the way that entire building looked? Uh, it was uh, easy pickings for a necromancer if there ever was one, and he certainly was. And the woman in black turns and looks at Jeff and. Places her hand on his shoulder and says, Believe me, if Miss Belloris has arrived, we'll come back to get her. But right now, Narina's not safe. We'll be in Bria in the morning, and once we're there, we'll figure out something. But we've. Right now, we. There's nothing we can do. The city is lost. Who was that? That was Tyrus. Well, yes, obviously, but can you tell us anything more? She, Who are you? She shakes her head and says, no, no. Not right now. Right now it's best that you rest. I fear the road ahead has just become far more difficult. Rest? What ship is this? We need to head back to Ashenport and get my ship. We. And with that, we... we're ending our session. Okay. <laughs> what? This is what, not what is this? Though. What is going on? Ah. 
Well, I hope the other group is making this much progress, too. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, they will encounter something. I hope How they're not that? making as much progress. I will be right back, though. I'm going to end the stream. All right. All right, so. <sighs> end of Act 1. Surprise. Tyrus is a fucking badass and is coming to kill everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It was a lot of fun for me and hopefully for the rest of the adventuring party. Uh, when we come back in two weeks, uh, we will have a new adventurer that will be joining the ranks. Uh, and we will continue our story and see just how our adventurers handle the appearance of this god. So with that, uh, I'm going to say goodnight here, speak with our adventurers. And see what their take is on all of this. So I hope you all have a good night. And I will see you guys very soon.